Thank you very much for the, the welcome words. Um, the second welcome words go to Leon. Leon, do you want to join me on stage? I finally get to see you. It's amazing. Next to Anna, I never look so tall. No, that's true. Um, so just to know, for, you, for you to know what Leon's going to be doing, Leon's going to give you an introduction of, or the story of Impact Hub Berlin and what it became today. And he will show you the importance of trust, courage and collaboration, but also zebras, glitter, and crazy serendipity. So, the floor is yours. Thank you. Wow. The bar is pretty high now. Um, first of all, again, many thanks to the opening words. Um, I think we're really, really happy to bring together in this place entrepreneurs, but also the other innovators out there, so people that come from public administration, from foundations, from large organizations. I think this is something that we really wanted to happen, and it's really great that it's already so early in the story of this house happening. So, whew. I've been writing on this speech a long time. That didn't necessarily make it better, but I'm going to try. So the question that everyone keeps asking me is, what does this house and this opening actually mean to me? Which is a very obvious and easy question. It's just really hard to answer. So first of all, welcome. Um, I've been trying to turn around all the time to see all of you, but now I'm up here and I'm telling you it's an amazing view. I'm really happy that you're all here. Great that you made it. My name is Leon and I was here when all of this started. And when I look back at the past nine years of building Impact Hub Berlin, there's one thing, there's really one thing that kept me going. And it wasn't glitter, even though it played a role. It also wasn't zebras, even though I really liked them, but it was really optimism. So that's the one key thing that when I think back, it has keep, kept me going throughout a lot of stuff. So let me explain. When Nele, Anna, and Martin approached me in 2013 um, and wanted to support entrepreneurs and innovators to create positive impact, well, what are you gonna say? What could go wrong? <laughs> so yeah, we did use this online and publicly. <laughs> Nine months later, I knew. So with me, Nele, and Anna, working full-time for more than half a year, we had no funding, no space whatsoever, and we had passed two ultimate deadlines to let the project go. Finally, early 2014, our last big hope, our last big investor, our last big chance, it just evaporated into thin air. And all we had built was a community of like-minded people on an online platform. And as Anna put it back there, we hit rock bottom. <laughs> yeah. But despite everything, I still feel, felt kind of optimistic. So a few weeks later, we got together and we looked at everything that we had done, and especially what we had done wrong. And instead of keeping that to ourselves, we actually published it. Um, we wanted to call it Fuck Up Report, but we thought that's more appropriate. Um, so the crazy thing is we shared it, and once we've shared it, we got a huge, huge wave of support from the one place that we'd actually succeeded to build, from our community. And next to heaps and heaps of encouragement and, and you know, messages of like keeping, keep, keep going and this needs, needs to happen, one befriended co-working space actually offered us 100 square meters on one floor. And we were intrigued, but we weren't really convinced. We had no money in the bank account, we had other job offers pending, and right then we traveled to Munich because another Impact Hub team was opening an Impact Hub in Munich. And after a great opening ceremony, just like today, maybe a bit smaller, um, we were at my parents' house, who are actually here today, and we were discussing, um, and we were really honest to be jealous. We were like, if it's impossible, if they can do it in Munich of all cities, 
we have to get it done in Berlin. And if not now, when then? You know? So in the heat of the moment, we called on the offer and we put out a post online asking our community to join. In fact, we asked them to commit to a paid membership offer. A membership to a space that wasn't existing with a team that had just shared how bad they'd fucked up all the way out in Neukölln. Three hours later, we had 35 paying members and really no way out, but we had to do it. So we did feel kind of optimistic, you know, three hours, 35 members, if we keep that growth going, it's gonna work out. <laughs> so with this first place, we called it the Proto Hub because it was only 100 square meters and it was actually 500 meters from here and a lot of the people who were involved in that space are now involved in this space and the area here. Having this really changed the dynamic fundamentally because suddenly people could walk into our mission. They didn't have to talk about it with us. It was all there. A crazy professional community, a funky place, and a team of kind of insane makers like Anna, spotting uh, neon tape and putting dance squares on the ground of our, of our floor. So the following year, we, we ran a crowdfunding campaign. Yeah, that's the house we were in. And we ran a crowdfunding campaign. We landed our first investment, and yes, that slide was in our first investment deck. Um, we put out, um, and we secured our first program. Also, we found a new space, and it was actually in Friedrichstraße. And we did uh, get in there, and finally, in May 2015, we moved into Friedrichstraße, into a space we called F246. Um, also paying homage to Martin's background in the <laughs> racing industry. <laughs> so some of the people who are here today can remember well how we built this space with our own hands, with our families, with our friends, our partners. Everyone had to get dirt down and dirty. And obviously the community, and we threw a big party. It was great. So big and great, in fact, that we had to re-renovate the space afterwards, which is actually where we're going to the Schwartz later. So the years that followed were a great rush. Uh, in the time between 2015 to 2019, the team grew with amazing talent. We traveled to crazy places supporting inclusive and uh, um, sustainable innovation. Um, and we brought startups from all over the world to Berlin that wanted to create impact with us. We worked with amazing partners, the GIZ, Vodafone, the Ministry for the Environment, and even some great leaders like Angela Merkel that you see here with some of our startups and Nele, uh, Frank Walter Steinmeier or Melinda Gates uh, were met and even celebrities like Muhammad Yunus, one of the heroes of us and the founding team and Prince Charles and Camilla came to visit us. <laughs> well, all of this brought us to a place where 2019 we felt ready for the next step. We felt we were ready to expand space and to upgrade as a team. We had a new goal, we had a new vision. It was the Impact Hub campus. But instead of growth, 2019 turned out quite differently. So after doubling our revenues every year, um, we had become very confident. So when our investments into the team and into finding a new space didn't quite work out, we stayed optimistic, very optimistic, too optimistic. So when several major deals fell apart in the middle of that year, that was really when we hit one of the toughest spots in our history as Impact Hub. Uh, we had to let go of half of the team, uh, many of whom were very, very able colleagues, many of whom were really good friends. Uh, and on top of that, we saw our co-founder, Anna, leave the team to take care of our health, which was all in all, let's say, not so easy. This remains one of the toughest times for me personally, but also for the whole Impact Hub team and the history that we've had so far as a company. So starting 2020, as a team, we were still pretty shaken and we looked at 2020 to be the year of stabilization. It, it was supposed to be the year of no growth and of much time to recharge. Well, we put out that plan and two weeks later, Corona hit. And once again, we had to improvise. And again, our optimism was really the only thing that kept us going. So it became really a year of extremes for Impact Hub. 
We ended up co-initiating and running the largest hackathon that had ever been done worldwide, V versus Virus, with 50,000 applications, 30,000 participants, and created, helped create solutions created by the pandemic um, with this, and supported thousands of innovators and actually hundreds of teams. At the same time, we were able to keep our core community together and support them throughout this crazy time and even switch all of our running programs with great partners, many of whom are here today, uh, into digital. But most importantly, we were able to keep our team together. What also happened in April 2020 was that we were offered the circular house in a very, very surprising fashion. So on top of everything else, we negotiated a complex deal to take over a construction project for a co-working space in the midst of the lockdown and put together a four million funding round to lay the foundation for the next chapter of Impact Hub Berlin. And our optimi optimism obviously once again was the driving force. And yes, this is exactly where you're sitting right now. <laughs> So since then, everything changed and we have grown the team threefold with amazing new colleagues. Thank you all for making this project also your own project. Thank you. We have grown our space from 600 to 3,500 square meters, including not only co-working, but maker spaces, gastronomy, you're sitting in it. So thanks to everyone who has helped build this amazing place, starting with the teams at Circular, at Transform, at LXSY Architects, at Heap59, and each and every person who has and is actually still building this amazing house. We're deeply thankful for everything that you've done um, thank you. And yes, Anna warned you, there's going to be a lot of thank yous. We already all now in this house have a community of more than 400 people after only three months. Thank you, community, because of you we're here, and without you there wouldn't be anything like Impact Hub Berlin. It's great that you're here, we're looking forward to the next years with you. Impact Hub has become what we always wanted it to be, the first place innovators go to start and grow ideas for people and the planet, a place where optimism is turned into tangible solutions. And all of this would have never been possible with, without a never-ending supply of optimism. The optimism that despite the incredible challenges we're facing, we can still make it, and that it's worth the effort. So the question that everyone keeps asking me, what does this house actually mean to me, is the wrong one. The question that matters is, what does it mean to us? What does it mean to us optimists? It means that another world is possible. It means that making innovation and entrepreneurship part of the solution is not only a possibility, it's happening. It's happening right here and right now. And it means that we have an obligation, an obligation to make another world happen. Thank you.